About five years ago, I quit my job as a tax consultant and decided to pursue a career in education. Why, you may be wondering. Because there were two questions that had bogged at my mind for years while I was on that job and even before it. And the questions are, one, do we all have to go to school to be educated? And two, what changes do we need to make to our current educational system to make it more exciting, more influential in unleashing the potentials of our young people? So the quest to answer this question led me to what I'd love to share with you today. But before then, I'd like you to come with me on a journey. Please close your eyes. All right, now, think about when you were a child. Nursery school, um, yeah, elementary school. What do you recall from those years? Nursery rhymes, the alphabet, numbers. Okay, still closing your eyes. Can you think about when you are now in high school or secondary school? Think back to a subject or content that is not related to what you do today and try and recall something from it. For me, that would be biology or literature in English. Hmm. All right, still closing your eyes. Now see yourself in your childhood. Or if you're still a young person, just imagine yourself at home and the skills you have learned unconsciously at home. What are they? It might be cooking, plumbing anything taking care of your room taking care of yourself <laughs> yeah for me it's cooking my grandmother's favorite food it was quite complex it's known as abula if you you know they are malai we do and beggary and then my favorite food beans and planting all right how did you learn to do those things Okay, open your eyes. I'm sure you see where I'm going with this, right? The things that, or the knowledge or skills that we have with us into adulthood or that we recall in adulthood are actually the ones that we practiced. Simply put, that is what experiential learning is. Learning by doing and reflection on what you have done. Benjamin Franklin has a popular quote, which I would have to paraphrase, <laughs> where he says that, you know, when you involve me, I learn. If you teach me or you show me, yeah, I would remember, but involve me, it sticks, I learn. Okay, so now that is the whole concept, I think, is a life will I call it the life changer? Yeah. The 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 thing that changes what can make education has his now to make it more powerful simply making it experiential experience they say experience is the best teacher the same applies to anything we're learning and experience doesn't have to be past tense or something bad that happened it's about practicing deliberate practice and the involvement of the real world into our theories and concepts. For too long, our educational system has focused on certificates, concepts, and very few subjects, maybe those in the sciences, have had the opportunity to engage and even the experiments that they do are not usually put into real world context. So there's a show that I recently loved um, I've been watching that I love so much. It's called Baking Impossible. And it brings bakers and, and merges them with engineers and tells them to create different things that seem impossible. But the possibilities are endless when we merge fields and these people are practically building robots. And, you know, I'm like, how many of our science students can build robots or can can do chain reactions beyond the ones that has to do with what is coming out in their exams. And that is the beauty of experiential learning. Two situations, or three actually, that drove this concept home for me that I would love to share with you as follows. One, where I used to work before, I told you I was a tax consultant or professional service, I worked in professional services. And the... Um, graduate requirement to get the job there was that you have a first class or a second class offer, which typically meant that you're smart <laughs> by school standards, at least. However, six months down the line during evaluation, you start hearing comments like, oh, that person is not assertive enough, or they're not a good team player, or they're not creative, you know, their PowerPoint slides are not perfect, blah, 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 blah. And I started thinking, these are not exactly technical skills. They're not about the job directly, but they're very key and important components of the job that 
the employer would love to see more of that makes a difference when it comes to the bottom line. But no one actually taught my colleagues and high distance intentionally at school. And your guess is as good as mine. Experiential learning actually helps to build collaborative, critical thinking, creativity skills, because there's no way you're building a real robot, for example, or you're um, thinking about how chemistry and baking is co connected, that you're not thinking outside the box because you're building, you're, you're not just thinking about it. So like if you're doing foods and nutrition, for example, and you're making connections to chemistry, you are actually, you have to bake and then think about the reactions chemically, right? And so I started thinking, how are we doing our young people in this service this way? If what the real world needs is not what the experience they're getting in actual education. Okay, second example that answers my first question is my grandmother of beloved um, memory. <laughs> I grew up with my grandmother and I absolutely adore her. So my grandmother, Mujisola Dekpegba, never went to formal school. And she thought for a long time she was not educated, but I reflect on her life and I realize she was the most educated person. Why? You may wonder. So she couldn't read and write English, right? But she was a paint maker, like she made actual house paint, text code, emulsion, <laughs> those things I didn't even know until I lived with her. And I saw her mix chemicals, bring colors to life. And how did she learn this through apprenticeship by working with certain white um, people that made paints in the factory that her husband had connected her to and she watched them and they showed her and she practiced over and over again till she knew all the color codes and combinations by heart. How cool is that? There are many chemistry students that cannot make paint <laughs> or don't even know what paint is made of. But well, my grandmother did this for years upon years and used it to send all her children to school. And anytime I think about her, I'm like, wow, that is education. That is what school should be about. Apprenticeship, practical learning, you know? Now, the third person that resonates and has been making me push for this alternative approaches to education and which one of it is experiential learning is one of my recent students by the name Cedric from Kenya. He came to our current, the school where I work currently, and he had planned to be a medical doctor all along till he got a shock. He came into our classroom and I teach entrepreneurial leadership. And one of the things that we require students to do is a unit called Individual Original Idea for Development. It's a practical learning course. So you have to think about a problem in your community and solve it practically, come up with a solution. <laughs> In attempting to do this, he thought about healthcare because he had to be a doctor, but he realized on going home, speaking to people, researching and exploring that problem that the problems in the healthcare industry was not in, not that they were insufficient doctors or maybe they weren't fully well trained or maybe they had, like there were other layers, systemic issues. And he discovered that he could create businesses that solved some of the systemic issues. One was automating documentation processes for um, primary healthcare centers, for example, to make it more accessible when people move across regions. Isn't that so cool? And so Cedric came back and realized, actually, I don't think I want to be a doctor. I want to solve problems like this and create businesses that would really change people's lives. And he graduated and now is studying economics and business at university and started two businesses while here. One is Science Academy and another a venture capital, capital firm. And those two actually make me wonder on how many young people are on this continent, how many young people are in Nigeria, in Oshogbo right there, that we are doing a disservice because we have not exposed them to education that transforms their mind by practical actions doing. You know, I run a boot camp in Nigeria where we bring guest speakers and we then teach design thinking and we have our students build similar solutions like what Cedric has done. And I think we need more of that. And you might be wondering, okay, how do we do this? If you're an educator, please do the same. Bring young people and um, guest professionals into your classroom so that they can help your students make the connections of the math, the physics, the literature that they're learning into the real world marketing, branding, those are real things that they need to learn skills and let them, you know, brand the maybe poetic day or something. 
let we need to encourage our, our students to use their skills and then reflect. So that's the beautiful thing about experiential learning, the reflection bit. Let them reflect on what they have learned and make connections. Once they make connections, it stays for life. Secondly, if you're a young person watching this, look for internships, virtual internships these days because of COVID, volunteer. Hey, I can't tell you how much you would gain. And that is the place where experiential learning is. But then also look for ways to tell your teachers to create the curriculum. The curriculum is set. We can't change it. Well, pending when we get there one day, <laughs> how do we do project-based learning, collaborative teamwork, encourage collaboration that actually encourages students to build things create things, make presentations, think outside the box, work with people, and so many other things that that helps them acquire real skills experientially. So not just saying, I can do ABC, I can do math problems. No, how does that connect to maybe driving? Making them make real world connections will make a world of difference. So I do hope that you, my listener, will take this challenge and join me on this journey of changing the face of education through experiential learning. Thank you.